this is your first time using AWS Batch, or have you used Batch on Fargate before? Either way, there's a lot of stuff we need to tell you about Fargate. Today's the day. There are two things running in the background on our plane. One is a job scheduler, and one is a, a service for scaling compute based on the information that's coming into that job scheduler. As a user, as a customer, you set up your batch environment, and we set up these two managed service planes for you on your behalf. And then once you start submitting work into that job scheduler, we reach into your VPC, into your AWS account, and start scaling the compute resources that are necessary for the work that you provide us. There is a notion of four types of resources that you as a customer interact with with AWS Batch. Well, the first thing is a job definition. Uh, this is just a template of what your job would look like. These are like, how many CPUs or memory do I use? What container do I use? Other properties that I set into the environment. How do I set up storage or mapping of volumes into that container, a job, is a unit of work, uh, that's an actual request, like as opposed to like, I am going to define a way to process an image, a job represents, I'm going to process this specific image right now. Uh, so you submit the job, you point at the job definition and you point to a job queue. The job queue is the thing that the AWS managed services set up for you. So that job queue determines the priority and the ordering of things that get dispatched into your AWS compute resources, right? And those compute resources are controlled and uh, by this notion of called a compute environment. That's where you had defined the resource mix. Uh, basically, what sort of instances do you need to perform the body of work that you might submit over time, uh, whether to use Spot or not? So Fargate is kind of different from EC2 because it's like you reach out with a container mm -hmm. and you say, Fargate, I want to run this container, rather exactly. than saying, Hey batch, can you spin me up an EC2 instance that I can run? Uh, I can run a container on. That's You're correct. actually just saying to Fargate, I don't care. Make it so. Yeah, Here's exactly. It's a it's a it's a container centric uh, compute provisioning uh, service, right? As opposed to a virtual machine centric compute provisioning resource, which is Amazon EC2. Right? And it's fair to say that Fargate is is much quicker at being able to run a container for you. Can it's sort of got a pool of reserve of these things sitting in the back end waiting for tasks to come along. That's correct. It, it really revolves around that like serverless architectures, event-driven architectures model where you need a quick response time and you're really coming from the standpoint that I'm always running containers. Fargate, you know, it does have those advantages of faster start times. It has that, you know, sort of serverless um, uh, API endpoint, you know, pat, uh, container centric provisioning, but it comes with some drawbacks. And one of those drawbacks is the limitation in the size of the container you can launch, right? We're limited up to 16 uh, vCPUs per container task. Sometimes you need more than that. Uh, you're limited up to 120 gigs for each container task. Again, sometimes you might need more for big memory jobs um, uh, that, that might need a lot of data in memory or, or for instance, a machine learning model that might need to be pulled into memory it might just be larger than what Fargate can provide. Right. Uh, and in that case, you have EC2. The other sort of drawback is that Fargate today does not support uh, GPUs so if you need or other accelerators. So if you need an accelerator, you would need to go to um, a compute environment that has EC2 resources, right? Another one actually has to do with this diagram right here that you're looking at in that batch places a single job onto a Fargate uh, resource, a single Fargate resource, right? So whether the size of that is small or big, uh, it'll just, you know, uh, launch a Fargate task equivalent to a one-to-one -one mapping to a, an, an AWS batch job. That is different than an EC2. So if you see on the right here, what will happen is that batch will start uh, launching larger instances in order to do uh, bin packing or job packing onto that instance. And that can be either, you know, different job sizes on that large instance to try to take up as much of it as possible. Or if you have a bunch of work that's all the same, for instance, an array job, it might be able to specify a resource that it fits the, the maximal number of those jobs onto it, that particular size instance and, and make really efficient utilization 
of that EC2 instance. Uh, that comes into play a lot when you're talking about, you know, the more expensive instances on EC2, specifically those with accelerators. We've seen customers try to manage their own fleet for provisioning of those resources and doing batch processing like uh, machine learning training. Uh, and then they switched over to batch and, and noticed that the utilization of those accelerators actually increased from something like 22% before batch to over 70%. Let me just comment here. It makes absolutely yeah. no sense to not use a machine to manage a bunch of machines when you've got the opportunity to do that. Yeah. So yeah. If batch is offering to manage the fleet for you. It's going to do a yeah. really good job of keeping a high utilization. Let's keep cracking. So Fargate, back to Fargate. So that's EC2, you know, with Batch for people who are new to Batch, you know, and what we feel is that if you're new to Batch, the way to start is with Fargate because the provisioning model is simpler. It's really easy to get up and started with Fargate and the billing for Fargate is pretty easy because that's a one-to-one -one mapping. I may have mentioned something about security, but, you know, if you're worried about container breakout or doing compliance uh, programs, uh, if you're using Fargate, it's a much easier compliance and security um, uh, documentation process to say we run one container per instance, right? Yeah. Uh, so those are the, the advantages. We, we say start with Fargate. If you need uh, more specialized resources, you know, you can create compute environments that are EC2 and your interaction model from your application doesn't change very much. Uh, with respect to the job definition. There are some different things in the API that you have to specify when you're talking about EC2 versus a Fargate environment, but uh, ultimately you're able to mix and match these compute environments in, into your AWS batch uh, set of resources. Uh, you do have to have separate job queues between Fargate and EC2, but honestly, you probably want that anyway. Customers could easily have multiple queues and multiple compute environments set up that's correct. Um, some queues are actually getting processed by Fargate. That could be the, you know, the low intensity uh, kind of day-to-day -day tasks that just need to be run relatively mm -hmm. quickly when they're when they're instantiated. And then the other ones are, you know, bigger, beefier instances that that may take uh, longer to spin up. And and of course, you want to keep them at a higher utilization rather than allowing them to sitting around waiting for jobs. Yeah, that's correct. And you know, in this blog post, like I mentioned, I recently published this blog post. Um, there's a section at the end about the, uh, you know, is Fargate right for me, right? Is it, it's a great startup environment. There's going to be some issues with when you get to the extremely high scale, uh, Fargate can actually scale quite high itself. It just does it as a, um, you know, the rate of dispatching tasks, uh, instead of the stepwise manner. So, you know, you launch this big EC2 instance, you can pack a lot of jobs really quickly. So you'll have a step of, of mm -hmm. scaling that is different on EC2 than it is with Fargate because you are launching individual tasks. You'll see a, a slow, uh, much more like, you know, linear slope. But the other things that I covered in this uh, Fargate blog are the positives, which are, you know, you can run uh, Graviton uh, containers uh, with Fargate and Windows containers. These are two features that we recently launched. And this is the first time you've been able to run Windows containers with AWS Batch jobs. So this opens up a whole new uh, set of customers that can take advantage of AWS Batch. And if your containers, if your applications happen to be things like Python or R or mm -hmm. you know, other kind of, uh, some other kind of scripted and, and non-compiled language, you're crazy if you're not trying to Graviton straight away because you could just chop your bills in half. That's correct. <laughs> uh, so other things we, yeah, yeah. Uh, so other things that we've announced for Fargate that over time, over especially this year, we've added capabilities to make Fargate more useful for batch customers, uh, which is you know those larger task sizes. Uh, but right alongside that was expanding the uh, local storage of Fargate from the default twenty to now you can define within your job definition a flexible uh, local EBS volume up to 200 gigs. If that 200 gigs is, is not enough for you to do your job, or if you have separate tasks that need input and output from each other, uh, you can use a shared file system, specifically a, a Amazon Elastic File System, and then define mount points that on a per job definition basis can access that specific area of the file system. So your jobs can share data across them or you can have a bigger space in order to do work with. Okay, so Angel, um, the best way for people to get started, of course, is to get started. Um, right. and the best way for them to do that is probably to go and read your blog post, right? 
Yes, they can read my blog post. Uh, you can also go to the Getting Started Guide for AWS Batch documentation, which has mm -hmm. you know um, uh, how to get started. It, it, it uses Fargate as the example. Uh, and finally, uh, HPC Recipes, which we had a tech short just a few weeks ago, I believe. Uh, we're adding a Fargate environment to that uh, HPC recipe, so you'll have a one-click install oh, cool. uh, through CloudFormation very shortly. If you're enjoying these videos, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that we can keep making more to help you understand how the cloud works and to show you new ways to help all the scientists and engineers around you who use HPC every day to do amazing things. It's what gets us motivated as well. See you next time.